I was intrigued to read that your family house in Rosebank, Cape Town, was used as a meeting and eating and sometimes sleeping safe house for ANC activists like Mkubisi Squatcha, Cameron Dagmo, Tony Ngini, and Nyami Boy. You write about an, quote, underlying bond you shared with people who were in the struggle. The more I read about this early phase of your life, the more I wondered, why did you never join the ANC? I'd seen a lot of the ANC in the 1980s, and I'd come to the genuine conclusion that there were two main streams in the ANC. One was a racial nationalist stream, and the other was a Marxist stream. And I'm definitely not a racial nationalist. My childhood and my parents made absolutely sure that we understood the evils of racial nationalism of any kind. <clears throat> and I wasn't a Marxist. Um, I think my mother was a socialist, and she definitely was. I, you know, I used to debate these things with her quite a lot. But I was definitely not a Marxist because I could not understand how having economic and political power in one centre would not lead to tyranny. So I was definitely opposed to Marxism. I was a liberal from very early on. And there were other liberals in the ANC, no question, and in the, and the organisations that were aligned to the UDF, which I was very involved in. But I knew we were a tiny minority, and I knew debating was an uphill battle, all on these issues. It's, I put some of the big debates that we had in the book. And I felt that the commitment to non-racialism was pushing me against my commitment to an open democracy. So it was kind of Marxism versus racial nationalism, and there was no space in between. And I really felt that we liberals were doomed in the ANC from that particular point. My husband dis disagreed with me, but he was much more socialist than I was, so he felt comfortable, he joined the ANC. And then Ken Andrew, who's here today, asked me to go with the DP to Codessa as an advisor to Working Group 3. And I grabbed the opportunity to go there, and then I realized what a fundamentally critical role people like Ken and Colin Eglin and Tony Leon and Dean Smuts and other people were playing there, because they had been preparing for decades, decades for a time when South Africans would sit down and talk about a constitution that could work in this complex plural society. And they were the most prepared for it. And although Pravin Gordon and others were really very good, the people who came with the ideas were the people from the DP, despite its incredibly small size. And they punched way above their weight. And this notion that it was Cyril Ramaphosa and Ruth Mayer they went fishing together and did all the PR stuff, but believe me, in the working groups, the heavy lifting was done by other people. And that was another thing that was never fundamentally seen by the journalists. This was all so Ramaphosa and Ruf Mayer. But the real heavy lifting was done by the people who thought through the conundrum of having an open democracy in our complex society for many, many decades. And I saw what an indispensable role they played. And having won the Constitution, the DP was absolutely thrashed in the election getting 1.7% of the vote. But even before the vote, I said to my husband, the biggest danger to South Africa's democracy now is that the ANC will become too powerful. That is the biggest danger to this democracy going forward. So in 1994, even though I'd worked for majority rule my whole life until then, I said to my husband, now that the next stage of the struggle is going to start, we're going to have to have checks and balances on too much power in the ANC. And that is why I went and voted for the DP, and he voted for the ANC, and I said, I cancelled your vote out, and we went home. 